This is uh, the beginning of a platform um, which is launching now in December and which will continue in um, 2011, 2012 and so on. And it's a platform that is dedicated entirely to exploring, um, experimenting with uh, the moving image. The moving image in its most open of definitions that is going from early cinema through to film, video, performance installations, slides, diaporamas, and uh, cutting across disciplines. So uh, from now into the future, we will be looking at the moving image, for example, in design or in architecture. And uh, of course, also cutting across chronology. So we're interested as much in uh, uh, what is called the cinema premiere, the first uh, movies, um, through to production today. Uh, the reason why we've called it a platform and not a biennial, not a festival, is that we're interested in a continuity of, uh, of time. We don't want to do something that starts and ends, then has an empty space, and then starts and ends again. Uh, we want this continuity in order to be able to really create a coherent body of work um, in terms of knowledge uh, for the public um, over time. And this first act is almost like a manifesto, um, really trying to sort of uh, demonstrate the different types of events, um, projects that we will be showing over the years to come. It consists of two sections. One section is what we call a four-day forum of live events, and this forum consists of various projects. Um, one of them is a three-day uh, performative discussion um, about the image as event and the event as image. Um, the other one are two education projects, then we have three screening cycles, we have a public arts project and we have a salon where everybody will meet until two in the morning. Now the second part of this platform is the exhibition. The exhibition, Atlas, Truths, Details, Intervals and the Afterlives of the Image. And this exhibition goes on until the middle of February. So you see there's quite a diversity of events and it's this diversity that we want to emphasize as being somehow the identity of the platform uh, for the future. How long do you um, think this will run? Uh, is there, I think, it, I guess, at, at the moment, it's, it's open-ended. It's open-ended, and uh, it's very difficult to say how long will, it will run. I mean, I hope, um, obviously, I won't be in this institution for the rest of my life, so one day when a new director takes over, it will be up to the new director to decide if they want to reconfigure this platform, you know, if they want to cancel it altogether. Um, but in any case, I hope that there is still a strong enough commitment to the moving image um, so as to be able to continue it. Um, has it something to do with your background, uh, why you focus on this um, topic? No, um, not particularly actually. It's more to do with the history of Geneva. Um, the fact is that Geneva had a biennial of the moving image that started in the 80s and finished in 2008. And um, when it finished, the city of Geneva came to us and said, you know, it's a shame to kind of lose this energy. And so we reacted to that and said, yes, we agree, but uh, we're not interested in doing a biennial. What we will do is somehow expand on the legacy that existed here already and try to kind of integrate it into our identity as a, as a Kunsthalle, as an art institution, and uh, develop that further into the future in such a way that we can really dig deep and create a, a richness of experience for the visitor. Hence the idea of the platform. Do you see um, yeah, uh, some, or, or what are the major developments in dealing with images um, concerning artists, how they are dealing with images? Because nowadays uh, everyone takes photos and everyone is shooting videos and they are um, distributed everywhere in the internet and uh, yeah, do you see a special um, development in how artists are dealing with that? Well, I think there are probably um, one or two points which are interesting with regards to your question. Um, one of them is the role of the amateur when it comes to the moving image. And actually there's a project in this platform which is called uh, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised and it's organized by a mediation group, a Microsillon, and they've done a sort of a timeline uh, from the beginning of the moving image through to the present day with regards to the amateur and the position of the amateur and the image um, in collaboration with various schools. So um, that is certainly a point which is, has gained a lot of ground in the last years as a result of all the social networks um, and as a, as a result of the sort of expansion of technology and the, 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 the cheapness of that technology. Um, but the sort of citizen journalist concept um, is something which is extremely important today. And the interesting thing is how this, this citizen journalist concept, how it kind of oscillates between um, you know, promoter of some sort of independent thinking but at the same time being manipulated by um, networks like CNN into creating the image of a democratic approach to the, 
you know, to, to image making or to journalism. Um, so that is, that's an aspect which is very interesting. The other aspect is, as you say, with this kind of ubiquity of the image, uh, this sort of immersion that we are all within, um, you know, we have moving images everywhere from, you know, TV through to the internet. Um, th there is a, a certain uh, tension which is created as to what it is exactly that we're looking at and um, how interesting it is and how, you know, where is the truth? of what it is that we're looking at. So a lot of artists are positioning themselves with regards to the truth of an image and exploring different techniques in order to be able to um, question that. You know, how far are images um, constructed? You know, what are the uh, flexibilities of the image? And, uh, you know, do the images come before the event or after the event? And, and how do people react in front of a camera? What is the role of the camera? Because the minute you position yourself in front of a camera, you react very differently to if you're not uh, aware of it. All of those constructions are very um, interesting questions for artists today. An interesting thing to mention, perhaps, in relation to the exhibition, uh, which is called Atlas, Truth, Details, Intervals, and the Afterlives of the Image, is that all of these terms are coming from a German art historian who died in 1929, Abby Warburg, and who um, is well known for a project which he never was able to complete called Nemocene Atlas. N Nemocene as memory in Greek, Atlas more as album in German, um, and which really served to create a new method of thinking, of analysis, for the image and serves today in a very interesting fashion um, to look at the moving image. Um, the purpose of choosing such a title is to sort of somehow be inspired by Warburg's um, destabilization of the usual way of looking at images, i.e. through chronologies, through categories, uh, through hierarchies. Um, and these kind of like destabilizations are, are something that artists today are extremely interested in. And I think many of the artists, most of the artists working in this exhibition um, are taking very much at heart. Um, just as an anecdotal, um, almost like zeitgeist uh, um, moment, uh, I was interested to see that the Museo Reina Sofia in Madrid is currently hosting a very interesting exhibition, historic exhibition on Warburg. Um, curated by one of uh, Warburg's most uh, important uh, scholars, Didier Ubermann. Um, so it's a very nice moment in time, actually, to have in Madrid the historic exhibition, to have here a more contemporary take on some of Warburg's ideas.